Hi, I salute you, ladies and gentlemen, and I welcome you to today's lecture, which is one of the many in the series of lectures that we've been having in the recent past, and we're still going to have even some more. I wish to take this opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to welcome you, but most importantly, to thank you for being there for us, walking this journey with us. Uh, I really appreciate your patience, your honesty, your support. We don't take it for granted. We really, really appreciate you for this. Today's lecture, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be about receptors of the innate immune system. And um, the person who is going to be delivering this lecture today, um, Stephen K, resilient guy, and the lecture comes to you courtesy of the immune system explainer channel. First of all, I want us to go through uh, the overview of the course outline. We're going to be defining the receptors. We shall talk about uh, pattern recognition receptors, PRLs, and we shall talk about the different types of PRLs, including extracellular PRLs, endocytic PRLs, uh, cell surface signaling PRLs, uh, intracellular PRLs. Let's define receptors. Receptors are chemical structures or molecules found on the surface of the cell's plasma membrane or inside the cell and help transduce the signal into the cell. Receptors can also be found in a fluid like blood as soluble or insoluble molecules. The next thing, ladies and gentlemen, is to talk about receptor binding. Receptors must be bound to their specific ligands or molecules and uh, the manner in which they bind is like key and lock to cause a specific action or a signal to be transduced into the cell. The binding ligands could be proteins, they could be carbohydrates, they could be glycoproteins, so on and so forth. And these are the structures that are presented by the microorganisms uh, most of the time like pathogen associated molecular patterns, pumps. Let's now talk about pattern recognition receptors, PRLs. PRLs are general receptors found on many cells of the innate immunity. Uh, that are encoded in the germline. That means you inherit them. PRLs bind to structures called pathogen-associated molecular patterns, PAMPs, and these are structures that are expressed by microorganisms, which, after being bound, uh, will help the PRLs be able to transduce a signal into the cell. PRLs can also uh, bind damage associated molecular patterns, DAMs. DAMs are released by host cells after cell damage, which means they need to be removed from the body by phagocytic cells. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a picture here that illustrates our pumps and the bacteria and viruses. Uh, the reason as to why we call them pathogen-associated molecular patterns is because they are patterns that are conserved across many types of microorganisms, bacteria, viruses, fungi, protozoa, helminths, so on and so forth. Let's talk about types of PRLs. And uh, the types of PRLs or the different types of PRLs include extracellular PRLs, these are PRLs that are found soluble or insoluble in fluids and perfect examples of these include C-reactive protein and manan binding lactin uh, uh, protein which is MBL as well as mindin. Uh, the other type of PRLs are endocytic PRLs and these are found uh, in the cytoplasm of the cell. We also have cell surface PRLs and these are PRLs that are associated or attached to the plasma membrane of the cell 
and we are also later going to talk about intracellular PRLs. Uh, let's talk about extracellular PRLs. The function of extracellular PRL is opsonization and activation of the complement cascades and as we had earlier mentioned the two perfect examples of extracellular PRLs are the C-reactive protein and the banana-binding lectin, uh, banan binding lectin uh, PRLs. Uh, we have these PRLs as being soluble acute phase proteins that are produced by the liver. And uh, I want us to talk about C-reactive protein first of all. C-reactive protein binds to phosphocholine. Uh, these are structures that are found on the bacteria, okay? Manan binding lectin. Uh, MBL binds to manose sugars on the bacteria and yeast cell walls. Manose sugars are also found on human cells, but the spacing of domains that bind favors microorganisms binding uh, so what we mean by this is that uh, the MVL is going to preferentially bind the microorganisms uh, compared to their preference for human cells. The next one, ladies and gentlemen, is MINDIN. And MINDIN is insoluble PRL associated with extracellular matrix. And this works by ozonization of bacteria, uh, that is alteration of the bacterial surface to enhance uptake by phagocytic cells. So the working of MINDIN is not different from MBL and uh, CRP. Um, then we have another category of PRLs and this category is endocytic PRLs. Endocytic PRLs are expressed on professional phagocytic cells and these professional phagocytic cells examples include neutrophils and macrophages. Examples of endocytic PRLs include macrophage, manose receptor, MMR. MMR binds to manose sugars on microorganisms and then uh, this is what helps them to be able to, um, uh, you know, help recognize uh, pumps, but then they do not transduce signal into the cell. Uh, then we have um, these very important PRLs and this is where uh, actually we're going to spend so much of our time um, uh, in this discussion. The cell surface PRLs. Cell surface PRLs are attached to the surface of the cell and have an extracellular domain a transmembrane domain and a cytoplasmic domain. Uh, the toll-like receptors, TLRs, are the most studied uh, types of PRLs in this category. Uh, TLRs are named after uh, tall protein in Drosophila melanogaster, the fruit fly. Uh, in serving as cell surface proteins to enhance immunity against bacteria and fungi. Uh, we have uh, a couple of uh, types of PRLs. We have toll-like receptor 1, we have uh, toll-like receptor 2, and toll-like receptor 6, heterodimer, which recognizes and binds to glycolipid-like molecules on microorganisms. And these molecules are expressed by both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, among other pathogens, right? Uh, then we also have um, toll-like receptor 3, toll-like receptor 7, toll-like receptor 8. Uh, all these three help in recognition and binding of RNA in virally infected cells. Uh, we have uh, the heterodimer. Uh, sorry, not heterodimer, but homodimer of toll-like receptor 4, which recognizes and binds to lipopolysaccharides, LPS, found on gram-negative bacteria. Then, 
Tolite receptor 5. Uh, Tolite receptor 5 specifically binds to flagellin on gram negative bacteria. Uh, flagellin are uh, locomotory uh, uh, structures of the gram negative bacteria. We have Tolite receptor 9, which binds to the sequence CPG dinucleotide found on the bacterial DNA. Therefore, bacteria, fungi, viruses, protozoa, and helminths are all detected by one or more of these toll-like receptors. And uh, we have some pictures here of the toll-like receptors, starting from the heterodium of toll-like receptor 2 and toll-like receptor 1, another heterodium of toll-like receptor 2, and toll like receptor 6, we have a homodyme of toll like receptor 4, homodyme of toll like receptor 5, which we said recognizes flagellin, we have a homodyme of toll like receptor 10, and then, ladies and gentlemen, we also have some other toll like receptors that are found within the nuclear membrane uh, of the cell, that is toll like receptor 3, toll like receptor 7, toll like receptor 8, and toll like receptor 9. Okay. Let's now talk about how cell surface signaling PRLs work and we shall consider the example of Tolac receptor 4 and explain how this works. Tolac receptor 4 activation targets nuclear factor kappa B, NFKB. Nuclear factor kappa B is a transcription factor that is very, very potent inducer of immune-related genes. Nuclear factor kappa B is found within the cytoplasm of cells and uh, it is bound to its inhibitor and that inhibitor is called inhibitor kappa B. For it to act on its target genes uh, in the cell nucleus, it must be freed from the grip of inhibitor of kappa B. Uh, the LPS which is the ligand for toll like receptor 4, as we had said earlier, is, a first, is first bound by uh, LPS binding protein, LBP, a carrier protein for LPS. Then this complex carries LPS to uh, CD14, to the CD14, which is found on the macrophage, which uh, is uh, its initial receptor. Okay. Then uh, the LPS CD14 complex then binds to and activates toll like receptor 4. Upon activation of toll like receptor 4, its cytoplasmic domain binds to another molecule known as MYD88. MYD88 then launches a cascade of phosphorylation reactions which lead to phosphorylation of inhibitor of copper B. Once phosphorylated, inhibitor, inhibitor of copper B releases its grip on uh, nuclear factor copper B before it is degraded. Uh, the now free nuclear factor copper B migrates to the nucleus where it is needed. In the nucleus, the nuclear factor kappa B activates many genes that are involved in enhancement of both innate and adaptive immune responses. Uh, then the last category of uh, uh, signaling PRLs, uh, ladies and gentlemen, are intracellular signaling PRLs, otherwise referred to as nodes. You may also call them not like receptors. Not one and not two proteins represent a separate class of intracellular PRLs expressed within the cytoplasm. Not one and not two recognized peptidoglycans, which are expressed on bacterial cell walls but more abundant on gram positive bacteria. So that is it for today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we really, really appreciate 
uh, your patience to listen to us. But most importantly, we continue making our passionate appeal that uh, you please subscribe to help us check the world and get, uh, um, you know, updates on every time. Uh, I mean, get updates every time we publish a new article and uh, we, we're going to be very happy about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.